Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going back to modern day Iraq for the first battle that started in 1916, the Battle of Sheikh Saad, and that occurred from January 6th to the 8th, 1916. In what would be the first attempt of relief of the Siege of Kut, Lieutenant General Sir Fenton Almer, the 13th Baronet who had received the Victoria Cross in 1891 for actions during the Hunza Nagar campaign in India, would have under his command Major General Sir George Young Husband, who would be appointed to the keeper of the Jewel House at the Tower of London in 1917. Young Husband was tasked to lead the relief force for Kut, consisting of the 6th Indian Cavalry Brigade, the 28th and 35th Indian Brigade, and elements of the 7th Meerut Division, consisting in total of almost 10,000 infantry, 1,300 cavalry, and 42 artillery pieces. Defending against the relief force was once again German Baron Wilhelm Leopold Kolmar Freier von der Goltz, who would not pass away until April, along with one of the architects of the Armenian Genocide, Halil Pasha. Between them, they commanded 9,000 infantry, one brigade of cavalry, and 20 artillery pieces. The tactical winner today was the British, however, Ottoman goals were obtained in delaying the relief force and minimizing casualties. Due to the lack of cavalry and bad weather grounding aircraft, General Young Husband was denied needed recon and instead had to trust in the distance his main force could see across the flat lands. In addition, the winter rains had made the lower Tigris a mud field slowing their movement. On January 5, 1916, he received information from local Arabs that the Ottomans were dug in just up the river. Seeing that the fences were on both sides, Young Husband ordered his troops to split onto both sides. The 92nd Punjabi and the 28th Brigade would approach on the right side of the river, while the 19th and 35th Brigade would attack on the left. Young Husband tried to micromanage both sides of the battle, but was ineffective at either. His orders for the right side of the river resulted in the forces attacking the center and strongest point of the Ottoman defenses. At the same time, Young Husband ordered his left side to only probe the defenses and not fully engage. This resulted in the Ottoman 35th Division on the left side, who was outnumbered 4 to 1, to successfully repel the British. In addition, the lack of attack on the left side of the river meant that Young Husband was unaware of the true defenses there, the probe having no positive information received. At 1600 hours, Young Husband called off the attack and regrouped on both sides. Meanwhile, the Ottoman troops moved forward reinforcements from the remaining 35th and 52nd Division to reinforce the Ottoman strong points. During this time, Commander Fenton Almer had arrived with British cavalry and infantry reinforcements. He also took over direct command, removing it from the local brigade commanders to coordinate the attack the next morning. The right bank forces began their march on the morning of January 7th and found the area carpeted in fog. Meanwhile, British forces on the left flank waited until mid-morning to begin their movement. At midday, the British forces began cooking their food for lunch break, when Ottoman forces attacked. The British were able to drive back the Ottoman attack but it further delayed the troops' attack plans on the left bank. When the attack finally commenced, British forces were never able to get within 300 yards of the Turkish trenches. The right side of the river, the British were able to assault the Ottoman trenches, and when General George Campbell took over local control of his troops, they found much more success. And by the end of the day, the right bank had been fully secured. The Ottomans on the left bank saw the results and pulled back to prepared positions at the Wadi seven miles back and would wait for the British troops there. Casualties were heavy with the British, suffering 2,000 dead and 2,300 wounded for at least 4,300 casualties. The Turks suffered a total of 1,200 casualties, including 512 prisoners. The dead and wounded were not broken out. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.